No, I think it's rampant in wrestling too. Um, you know, leaving the core skills and leaving the common positions. So, and this has been something that, you know, when I talk to people on the phone and because they call about camps and so forth, um, I always mention this. You know, the problem with wrestling is we have five-year-olds whose coach has them practicing uh, how to score from a Russian two-on-one, which is like a side control of the arm, you could say. Um, and then we have eight... 18 year old men, young men who have wrestled since they were six, drilling half Nelsons. And I'm like, this is just stupid, right? So in, re in gymnastics, we have levels, right? There's a level seven gymnast on the balance beam is doing the same skills, no matter if she's in Maryland or Canada or Texas or, or Arkansas, wherever. Um, well, wrestling, we don't have that. Well, now we do with my um, online academy, which has been around since 2005. So it's a system though, right? And so it's kind of like teaching math. So, you know, you're not going to teach uh, algebra two until you have done pre-algebra and, and long division. Okay. So that's the thing. And that's, that's what you're talking about in jujitsu is the coaches and the athletes are interested in trying to, to learn trigonometry when they don't even know long division yet. So they should be prioritizing. Um, but for, from a wrestling standpoint, and I think it's the same in jujitsu, and I'm going to, I'm going to sound, sound like I'm going to piss off a lot of coaches here, but you are at the mercy of your coach. When they go to, they go to your gym, uh, or, you know, they go into Kabir's gym, they're at his mercy. And that's not a bad thing if you're at the right gym, but if you're new to a sport and you're like, oh, my kid's wrestling and he's an, he's an, he's a freshman, he's on JV and I have fun. That coach may be phenomenal, and that coach may not know what he's doing. That coach may pull wrestling moves off of YouTube and plan his practice 10 minutes before. And I know that happens a lot. So guess what? I hate to tell you this, but your son is not ever going to be very good at wrestling. He's only got four years. So guess what you have to do? You have to sort of find a way to take the ball and run with it a little bit, you know? Um, because that is kind of an Achilles heel as far as a coaches. We have to calm down and focus on kind of a curriculum and not just try to show random stuff like, oh, I, I saw a, again, back to a foot sweep maybe. Oh, Hilda Merlis hits a, a, a pass by to a foot sweep and she hit it in the Olympics like three times. Let's drill that. I'm like, bro, you can't, your guys can't even hit a single leg to a quick change off. They can't knee slide on bottom. They give up their arms on bottom. You know, they're too easy to stab down. Your kid has a left-handed wrestling stance, but he's right-handed. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, they're never going to win. How long have they wrestled? Seven years. I'm like, you've wrestled seven years and you're right-handed? Um, hey, hit me with the double leg. Easy. Oh, yep, you are right-handed. You got to get your right foot forward. Oh, I can't do that. I've been wrestling for seven years. I'm like... This is a problem. So, you know, the listeners need to understand that you are, in fact, at the mercy of a coach. And uh, you better make sure that your coach is doing a great job. And the coach is listening to this. You need to understand that your kids are at your mercy. You got to make sure that you focus your efforts and make them very good at wrestling. And you don't do that by just showing random techniques. So what I say is like, you know, let's just take five 500-piece um, puzzles. Okay, now dump them in a big, dump them on the floor, mix them all up. I'm like, okay, we're gonna make, we're gonna put this puzzle together. And you're like, dude, you, let's separate the pieces first and then we have a fighting chance. Nope, we're not even gonna do that. We're just gonna dig through here and try to put the puzzle together. Okay, kids, you wanna help? I mean, that's how we teach wrestling in America and I'm sure jujitsu in a lot of conversations I've had over the past couple of years, um, you know, um, you know, you, you've got your belt system, but just like gymnastics, I my niece is level 10, all around level 10 champ in Missouri, uh, two years in a row. And my, my, my sister-in-law competed for um, OU and uh, she's competed overseas and everything. She was very high level. And, you know, they used to be so strict. I mean, if you wanted to be level seven, you really had to work at it. Now, sometimes, uh, you know, I know in jujitsu, certain gyms kind of just give belts away 
just like karate classes do too, right? I mean, everybody's a black belt, it seems like. Um, where in gymnastics, is some, some gyms are very strict, but some are the opposite. They hold their girls back and, and they're like, dude, your, your team has been level six for three years. You've won state three years in a row. You got to promote those girls to level seven. So I think anytime we kind of get into where there's a gym ownership side of things and there's, there's, um, there's trophies to win and hence there's money to be made, um, sometimes that throws a wrench in things too. And we, we have to be careful about that as, as, as coaches. And uh, just just stick to a system so that our, our athletes have a fighting chance.